Hello and welcome to Capital Ideas TV. I'm Mark Bunting. Wayne Gretzky has a famous expression that's often quoted in business circles. Skate to where the puck is going, not where it's been. Well, cannabis company Valens Grow Works executed that bit of wisdom to a T. Just listen and watch what CEO Tyler Robson told us on our Legalization Day special in October. If you look at any mature market in cannabis, whether it's Colorado, Oregon, Washington, California, flower sales go down month after month and people are getting into different types of delivery systems, different products, different different tastes essentially. So that's where we're really focused on because at the end of the day, flour will commoditize and it's what are these companies gonna do when that hits? Now, while most competitors chase production capacity in the dried flour market, Robson and his team focused on cannabinoid extraction. They correctly predicted demand for cannabis infused creams, beverages, edibles, and tinctures was where consumer preferences were headed. That foresight has paid off in a big way. Valens is now the largest third-party supplier of cannabis extracts in Canada, with capacity of 240,000 kilograms. It also has several extraction methods at its disposal, so it can churn out virtually any type of cannabis oil required. That unique scale and versatility has led major cannabis producers like Canopy Growth and Tilray to sign supply deals with Valens. And as a result, shares have nearly doubled over the past 12 months to a record high. Valens has more than supply deals in its back pocket. It's also flush with growth capital, thanks to a recent $43 million financing. With the building blocks firmly in place, the company is now turning its attention to meaningful revenue generation. CEO Tyler Robson fills us in on what investors can expect. Tyler, you were last here six months ago. A lot has happened for Valens Growworks uh, since then. So can you give us a, an update on some of the milestones that the company's been hitting over the past several months? Yeah, no, absolutely. So first legalization happened. That was an exciting time for everybody. We're, we're excited to participate. Uh, we've gone public with a lot of our, our agreements for extraction, uh, and we've raised our capacity from 78 tons to 240. We continue to, to expand rapidly. We, uh, yeah, we're excited to participate for sure. You mentioned and alluded to some contracts there, and you're not going small. You're looking at uh, Canopy and Tilray and Organogram. And so tell us about the, the nature of those uh, deals and how, why they're important for you. For sure. So we are working with the majority of, of the top 10 licensed producers now that we've gone public with. Uh, and it, the, the simplest form is basically a licensed producer will send us product, will extract it, whatever refinement they want, to whatever p level that they want, whether it's, it's crude or distillate, whatever they want, and basically send it back. So the best way to think of us is fee for service. Now, the last time, uh, again, that you were on, uh, legalization 1.0, that's all well and good. Yeah. That's essentially uh, dried flour. Now we're looking at legalization 2.0 in October in Canada, and those are all the ancillary products, the infused beverages, edibles. For sure. And you think your uh, Valens Grow Works is nicely set up for that. So how are you preparing for that, and, and what does Valens look like after uh, uh, legalization 2.0? Absolutely. So if you look at October, that's when Health Canada is launching beverages, edibles, concentrates. Uh, basically any derivative. So if you look at the way Valens is positioned, any ancillary product, it has to get extracted first. So we're, we're so uniquely positioned to tap into that market and really be an effective and dominant player when legalization 2.0 comes and, and really building out our capacity for white label products to participate in, in, in uh, concentrates, derivatives, beverages, like you said, yeah. And you're, you're confident that, that you're, uh, you're not growing too quickly, you can handle all this new business and, and, and everything's uh, rolling along nicely? Absolutely, we've been very strategic expanding. We, we could have expanded faster. Uh, we've been very strategic. We wanted to make sure we're hitting our strides and being effective at every level and provide shareholder value before we, we expanded too quickly and misstepped. Talk about the, the white label aspect of uh, Valens Growworks strategy. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of people want to enter the cannabis space, but they don't know how. So whether it's consumer packaged goods, alcohol, beverages, a lot of guys are now looking for existing license holders to come in and do their uh, essentially custom manufacturing for them. And Valens is uh, strategically uh, set up to basically do that for them. And there's a lot of conversations going on with consumer packaged goods companies that are, that are looking at the space, they just haven't made a move yet. Give us a sense of uh, market reaction to Valens Grow Work six months ago to now. You recently raised $43 million, yep. which was 
hugely oversubscribed, I understand, and, and, and the type of investor that you're attracting now. For sure. So I think when we, we were together six months ago, a lot of people didn't understand what extraction was or what it meant, to end, and they really kind of got stuck on this term funded capacity for greenhouses where your market cap was dictated by essentially you know, the size of your cultivation center, which I, I think that's fundamentally wrong now and the, your average investor starting to realize it. So as we continue to mature, get our story out and people realize that, that in mature markets, ancillary products sell better than flour, uh, we become much more attractive and that's why our, our stock is performing the way it does and I don't expect it to stop anytime soon. Well, let's talk about your stock because yeah. you just mentioned it there. Um, October 17th, you're trading about a dollar five. Yep. Now you're well over three, yep. and you've had a, a tremendous run. And at that time, you said we're significantly undervalued. Yep. Do you still think that? I truly do believe that. And if you look at some of the research that came out from AltaCorp or, or GMP Securities, they have us anywhere from seven to eight dollars, and we expect to continue to push that margin as we release quarterly financials and really kind of go public with who we are and what we're doing. Uh, we, we plan to be a dominant player in the space, and we continue to kind of keep making strides. And you're not just looking at Canada, you're, you're looking globally, essentially. You're, um, you have ambitions to have a, a global footprint. So what's happening internationally uh, for Valance? Yeah, so we're being very strategic. We want to execute in Canada first, get credit for what we've built, and then expand globally. So we're obviously looking in South America, and the European Union is a big one for us. Obviously, uh, we're, we're a conservative company, so we'll look at 50 opportunities before we pick the one we like the most. But uh, we're very, very active at, at looking at M&A opportunities. Six months ago, you said conservatively for fiscal 2019, uh, you were thinking uh, you could hit about 30 million in EBITDA. Now, you, yeah. you'd rather not give projections yourself, sure. but uh, we do have, uh, we know that uh, there are four analysts uh, covering you right now. Yeah. There's going to be uh, maybe seven, I guess, in the next uh, several weeks or months. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have a lot of. Uh, different forecasts. So yeah. what are the analysts saying then? There's some terrific research coming out on our company, whether it's Altcorp, uh, GMP Securities, Haywood or Mackey, they've done a terrific job really understanding the metrics and the business model. And just to wrap it up here, uh, Tyler, for shareholders or non-shareholders, or just the investors in general, people who are watching, yeah. uh, so wrap it up with a bow here. Why is Balance Growworks a, a place that investors should really consider putting their money? Well, if you look at being sustainable and continuing to chase the margin long term, you have to be an extraction. There's so few of us that are in there right now. Uh, you look at margin stability, consistency, and, and projections. We have contracted revenue in EBITDA for the next four years, so we know what we're actually going to hit, uh, and we're very, very comfortable, and, and we will be a dominant player in the global extraction footprint. <laughs>